I'm, um, uh, I'd like to uh, kick this uh, uh, webinar off by just giving a brief overview. Um, we're going to be talking today about various aspects of risk. Uh, risk in terms of uh, primarily uh, the uh, information technology risk encountered on projects. Uh, but it's a concept that really applies uh, to risk of, of pretty much any type. Um, <clears throat> I want to uh, first do some uh, uh, descriptions of definitions um, and uh, look at uh, varying types of risks and their impacts uh, on software process, uh, software environments, uh, and then address some of the solutions, how these can be mitigated. So uh, moving along, um, we're going to be talking about really what is risk, uh, what are the types and costs of risks to, uh, to organizations, and how can the impacts uh, be reduced, either at the project level or the organization level. It's um, interesting to consider that the risk of um, uh, cost uh, overruns uh, or failed projects throughout industry globally, on a global basis, is estimated to be very high, much higher than most people imagine. Uh, numbers quoted uh, range from about 59% uh, to 75% or even greater, uh, depending on um, what the environment is, uh, what the types of projects are, and so on. Uh, but this is a, a very significant uh, concern. Risk is something that's part of uh, everyday life, and it's certainly part of project life. And uh, as uh, practitioners in the IT space, uh, we all need to be uh, aware of what the risks are and have a way of dealing with them. Within information technology, I uh, would consider that there are four basic categories uh, of risk. Uh, there are uh, factors that uh, affect the potential changes or unexpected uh, growth of scope in projects, uh, schedule, uh, resources, and other constraints. Um, these can run the range from uh, uh, unexpected uh, uh, project uh, interruptions, uh, dependencies, and other factors that may have very little to do with the actual project that's being encountered. Let's talk first about the uh, risk attributed to scope. Now, scope in the software arena uh, really is the category of <clears throat> what you're addressing uh, <clears throat> from the standpoint of a project. Uh, the term scope creep <clears throat> should be familiar to, uh, to many organizations. Uh, scope creep is unanticipated or unplanned for growth uh, within the context of a project. Now, from the very earliest days of software development, uh, scope creep became um, inherent <clears throat> uh, because uh, as the potential for automation of business processes became more familiar, uh, the opportunities for what could be automated and to what extent also grew. Uh, scope creep is, uh, from the perspective of the development side of the house, um, one of those things that must be monitored and controlled, otherwise projects uh, can get very much out of control. And the risk of scope creep tends to follow certain patterns that relate to the novelty of the type of automation, the novelty of the technology, uh, the sophistication of the customer or intended user of the software, and other factors like the uh, <clears throat> uh, the changing aspects of business. So <clears throat> we'll get into uh, ways to anticipate and mitigate aspects of scope creep later, but uh, it's really something that can be only that only can be managed uh, when there is uh, awareness on both sides 
that there's a potential for a scope creep, and um, that there are costs attached to uh, meeting those growing needs uh, that need to be recognized by, by all stakeholders on a project. <clears throat> One of the most costly aspects of scope risk has to do with the integration aspect of hardware. Uh, hardware uh, tends to be, uh, in many situations, a commodity factor when you're talking about a software or system project. Um, <clears throat> hardware uh, defects uh, tend to be uh, rather surprising to us software people. Uh, we tend to uh, anticipate <clears throat> that the um, the weakest link uh, might be more of a uh, uh, a software problem than a hardware problem in many cases. Uh, but in fact, hardware defects are uh, historically uh, one of the larger causes of uh, direct cost in uh, that can lead to uh, to project failure. Certainly, in terms of uh, uh, scope creep uh, to address potential defects and workarounds that have to be built into the software, uh, or uh, as we'll see in the schedule risk, uh, coming into the um, uh, the idea of delaying projects uh, to able to uh, be able to overcome the uh, hardware deficits. Software defects. Um, are things that are uh, normally addressed in the quality assurance, uh, early phase quality assurance activities, uh, and certainly um, in later phase through uh, after construction of a project from a software standpoint uh, into the, uh, the testing and uh, defect removal phases. Um, software defects uh, come into play when you're talking about scope uh, because there are often uh, extenuating uh, circumstances on how to work around problems in uh, either middleware or uh, system um, operating systems uh, that can only be addressed by uh, uh, expanding the scope of the project to uh, uh, to work around those. Um, so, uh, both hardware and software defects uh, should be anticipated and planned for uh, depending on um, the reliability of the legacy or base system that you're trying to work with. Um, certain types of base systems, by the way, are uh, much more, have much more inherent uh, defect potential uh, and should be, uh, when you're trying to anticipate the impact of, uh, of risk uh, on the cost and overall uh, uh, scope of the project um, need to be factored in. We'll get into that a little bit later when I talk about um, impact and, and uh, factors relating to uh, delays and, and overruns. Um, <clears throat> the fourth point here, scope gaps, uh, really re refer to um, uh, poorly prepared uh, scope statements of, uh, of projects. Now, this is something that is often outside the realm of the software development organization, uh, but it's something that they are responsible for addressing. So this is uh, uh, often a very uh, weighty problem to, to deal with. Um, if the scope of a project is uh, uh, surprisingly and unexpectedly increased because it's addressing something that's outside the realm of the business area, uh, then it, it may result in a failed project right from the beginning because uh, without having a clear plan of all of the stakeholders,